This is a video on um, solids or three-dimensional figures and density of those figures as well. So in the solids discussion, um, I'll re review what uh, the different types of solids are and then um, a little bit about volume, which is the amount that can fit inside of that solid. And then we'll uh, touch on what density is. All right, so here are the five uh, types of solids that we'll be um, aware of in this course. And um, a couple of things that are important is that I have um, colored or highlighted or pointed out what the base of that solid is. So we name a solid according to the shape of its base. So for instance, this would be a rectangular pyramid. Sorry, let me start again. A rectangular prism a triangular pyramid, a cylinder has a circular base, and a cone also has a circular base. A sphere doesn't have a base. It has what we call a cross-section, which that shape there would be a circular cross-section for that sphere. So um, one thing that I do want to point out to you is that the base of a solid is the side that is different from the others. So um, the cylinder is a great example because, you know, that middle section, you know, it, it's, it's almost like you've taken a rectangle and you've, uh, you've bent it to wrap around that shape. But the two circles, uh, the cone is a similar thing. That circle, there's no other shape that looks like that. So it's almost like the base stands out. It's not always the surface that the, uh, the solid is sitting on. It's the shape that's different. So that's what helps you name and find uh, surface area and volume of these solids. Okay, uh, a quick review of the volume of solids. This big B here, this uppercase B, you'll often see in formulas, and it represents the area of the base. So the shape of the base, whether it's a rectangle, a triangle, a trapezoid, um, a circle, the shape of the base determines how you find the area of the base. So those area formulas is what you're going to have to reference to find the area of the base. So if the shape of the base is a square, then you would use the formula for area of a square. If the shape of the base is a circle, you would find the area of a circle using the pi r squared area formula for a circle. Um, uh, prism and cylinders, as uh, as it would be, it, uh, the volume formula would be the area of the base times the height of the solid. So the height of the solid is the shortest distance from the base to the opposite sides, ba opposite base, or in a pyramid or a cone, the uh, point at the top of the um, solid. A pyramid and a cone, uh, that's going to be one-third times the area of the base times the height of the solid. And then a sphere is gonna be four thirds times pi times the radius cubed. So keep in mind that these circular uh, figures, cone, sphere, uh, cylinder, are all gonna have a radius. Um, you can find the radius. It's the distance from the center to the edge of the circle. Uh, notice that the radius for, for that entire circle is gonna be the same. The diameter is twice the length of the radius. These are all things that you've done before. Um, just keep in mind that when you're finding the area of a circle or a circle-based figure, you're going to need to know the, the, the radius, and you're going to need to use this number pi. Okay, so a couple of examples to, uh, finding volume. I'm going to do uh, these two with you. First, we have a triangular prism because the... Um, if you could see that it does not all come to a point, they're not slanting in on each other, we do indeed actually have a prism here, but we do have triangle bases. Again, they're different. They stand out. Hopefully, you can see these as being different uh, than the other sides of this prism. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the area of that triangle, and we're going to use that with the height of the prism in order to then find calculate the volume. All right, so the area of a triangle is one-half base times height. And in order to find the base and the height in a triangle, you look no further than the right angle. So 
this 12 inches and the edge that goes with that 12 inch height is right there. They're perpendicular, they make a right angle. That's your base and your height. So opposite sides of a parallelogram are the same. So if the bottom is three, then this side is automatically three. So now I've got one half times three times 12. So that's gonna be 18. And then the height of this prism can be found right here as, it does, as 18 does represent the distance between those two triangles. So my volume will be the area of the base times the height or 18 times 18, which if you know your squares off the top of your head, you'll know that, or you'll need to type that into your calculator to find the <laughs> volume here. So 324 inches, that's what these two quote marks are. It's a shortcut for inches. Inches squared, or I'm sorry, not squared, but cubed, as volume is indeed three-dimensional. Inches cubed for my volume of that triangular prism. All right, let's take care of the volume for this cone here. Uh, indeed, it's a cone because it's a pyramid with a circle base. All right, so keep that in mind as my volume for my cone is going to be one-third times the area of the base times the height of the solid. All right, so uh, real quick, we're just going to write that formula out. One-third times the area of the base times the height of the solid. The area of the base is a circle, so it's going to be pi r squared. And in this case, the diameter that they gave us is 6, which the radius is going to be half of that, so the radius is going to be 3. So pi times 3 squared, or 9 pi. Notice that I didn't type that into my calculator now and get a decimal. I'm going to try to keep from rounding until the very end of this problem. All right, so 9 pi is going to be the area of my base. The height of this pyramid is the distance from the point to the base, and that's going to be 7. Hopefully you can see that right here. Um, that's going to be 7. So then when I go do my volume formula, 1 third times 9 pi times 7. Well, 1 third of 9 is 3 times pi times 7. So that's 21 pi and this will be centimeters cubed. Now I can leave it like that because that's an exact answer or I could type that in my calculator if I'm more comfortable without pi as my answer. Okay, now we've talked about volume and the next phase of this is density. All right, density is the mass of a solid. So um, mass similar to something like weight um, thickness uh, divided by the volume, how much will fit inside of that container, of that three-dimensional container. So density um, is mass over volume. So mass is something that you're typically going to have to be given or given a way to find out, uh, as if, you know, if I give you a word problem, you're not going to just be able to weigh a solid. So I'm going to have to give you that information. So be on the lookout for that information when we talk about mass of a solid or at least be able to find it from the information that's provided. Um, so there's our density uh, of a solid formula there. So let's do this example together just to drive home how to find the density of a solid. Uh, the mass of a two foot tall cone is one pound. Okay, so right away, this number that's gonna go on top is gonna be two for us because it tells us right there that a, um, I'm sorry, look at that, I almost messed that up, that the mass of a two foot tall cone is one pound. So actually the top number is gonna be one. Almost messed that up. All right, the height is indeed going to be two feet. So I'm gonna need that when I figure out the cone. Uh, just a real quick sketch for my cone. You know, it's something like what we just found. Um, they tell me that the radius of the cone's base is 0.25. So that's 0.25 and we already knew that the height was two. So. Uh, the volume of the solid, which I need to find, was one-third 
area of the base times the height. Um, the area of the base is pi r squared because the shape of the base is a circle. So that's going to be pi times 0.25 squared. And 0.25 squared is 0 0.0625. So we have 0 0.0625 pi um, for our area of our base. And then we already knew that the height um, is 2. And so now our volume formula is going to be one-third times 0 0.0625 pi times 2. Now, because we have fractions and decimals in the same place, I just go ahead and, um, and get a number out of my calculator for this in an effort to keep it from being too confusing. All right, so um, I'm going to go ahead and multiply that out. 0 0.0625 times pi, then times one third, and times two. And I get 0 0.13, and that would be my uh, feet cubed. So I'm going to put that on the bottom, 0 0.13. So 1 divided by 0 0.13. And we get 7.69. And then make sure you get your units written correctly. Pounds per foot cubed. So that's your mass over volume units there.